My name is Jasita Binti Subtumalit and I will be presenting the company background of Gamuda Berhad. Gamuda Berhad is an engineering property and infrastructure company based in Malaysia on 1976. As of today, Gamuda Berhad has a company subsidiaries such as Gamuda Construction Sendirian Berhad and Gamuda Engineering Sendirian Berhad. Gamuda Berhad operates in three business segments which is engineering and construction, property development, water and expressway concussions. Gamuda Berhad not only operates in Malaysia but it also operates in Taiwan, China, Mauritius, Qatar, Bahrain, Vietnam and, and other country. Next, vision and mission. Mission, Gamuda Berhad reliably deliver innovative world-class infrastructure and premier lifestyle properties to their customers to their core business in infrastructure development and construction. Vision, they aim to lead the region in innovative breakthrough solutions for large-scale public infrastructure and property development. These are a few awards and achievements that has been achieved by Gamuda Berhad throughout their business timeline. Next, management approach. Factors to consider having a segment reporting. First, identifying the chief operating decision maker CODM second identifying business activities some may not earn revenue or incur expenses third determining whether discrete financial information is available for these business activities to be recognized as a segment reporting last determining determining whether that information is regularly reviewed by the chief operating decision maker Type of segments. Gamuda Berhad operates in three types of segments, which is engineering and construction, second, property development, third, water and expressway concussions. And these are the Gamuda Board of Directors, which is the CODM of the Gamuda Berhad. CODM responsibilities. Uh, provide direction for the organizations. Second, fiduciary duty to protect the organization's assets and members' investment. Third, ensure the organization has adequate resources. And last, create a strategic plan and ensure that it is followed. Hello everyone, so for part segment report, as we all should know, a segment reporting is mandatory for publicly traded companies such as the Muda Berhad itself. This segment reporting is prepared so that uh, investor, creditors or chief of decision making, CODM, may use the information provided for future decision making. A segmentation report review based on first whether there is a disclosure of information for the product or services provided by the, com the company, second whether there is a disclosure of financial report varies to the segment of product or services provided by the company, and the third one whether there is a disclosure of information such as geographical revenue. As we can see from the slide that Gamuda Berhad also provides an information for the collective revenue from the operation joining venture with other overseas companies outside of Malaysia. This information which disclosed in Gamuda Berhad annual report will enable the users to analyze the nature and financial effects of the business activities. Additionally, for other information, a non-segmental report are also included varies to the services provided, for instance, interest income, non-cash item, which later we stated in order to arrive at the amount of the consolidated financial statement. 
Therefore, what are the key steps in identifying a reportable segment? The first one is by identifying the Chief Operating Decision Maker, CODM, which play the major roles toward making the decisions for a segmental performance. Second, by identifying the business activities, which actually enables the public to understand the company business activity and major operation. We are able to identify the major operation and business activity by going through the notes provided in the financial statement that indicate the segmental information. The third one is to determine whether discrete financial information is available for the business activity. In this case, the revenue and the profit before tax are shown and segregated appropriately according to MFRS 8 regulation, which then enable the CODM to review the information and monitor the performance of the company itself. And the fourth one is to determine whether that information is actually regularly reviewed by the CODM. We are able to identify this as the annual report consists of a reporting consists of reporting the group quarterly performance that will be available and used by the by the by the CODM to review on the regular basis. As we can see from this slide extract of SOPL segmental, Tamuda Bahad prepared the segmental report accordingly based on the types of product or services provided by the company itself. Therefore, from this uh, extracted of SOPL, we selected the profit before tax as our quantitative as to calculate our quantitative threshold. Thus, according to MFRS 8, any operating segment that fulfills the requirement of quantitative threshold must be reported. quantitative segments are reportable or not reportable. The first one is to calculate by referring to the, re to the revenue report which inclusive of both sales from external to internal customer. The second one is the amount of reported revenue or loss and the third one its assets are 10% or more of the co combined asset of all operating segments. Therefore, in Gamuda Berhad, we select criteria number 2, which is to calculate the threshold based on the profit or loss before tax. As we can see from this slide, for the applications of 10% rule quantitative threshold, as we select the profit before tax to calculate, our, to calculate and decide whether it is a reportable or an unreportable uh, segments so the, for the first one engineer and construction as we calculate we get 43.33 percent whereby it is more than 10 percent and it is reportable second one is property development and club operation we get 27.5 percent it is more than 10 percent and also reportable and the last one is water and expressway concession we get this for 29.17 percent whereby it is also 10, more than 10% and also reportable. Thus, the three business segments should be reported in the annual report of the Muda Bahad. Next, by applying the 75% rules, in this case, we actually combine business segment for engineer and construction with the property development and club operation. As we all should know, the application of 75% based on MFRS 8, in order to apply the 75% rules, we must first understand the aggregations of the operating segments and must be in the similar aspect, such as the first one, nature of the product and services, second one, nature of the production process, the third one, types or class of customer for the product or services, and the fourth one is the method used to distribute the product or the services. Therefore, in this case, we found out that there is a similar services provided in business segment for engineer and construction with the property development and crop operation. This is where construction and property development has the same nature. 
therefore we combine both of this business profit before tax on this business segment and divide it with the total combined with water and express fair concession as the first one we get 70.83% which is less than seven, which is less than 7.75% and it is unreportable and the second one is water and express fair concession we also get the same one as before 29.17% which is less than 75% and also unreportable. We cannot combine the water and express wear concession with both of engineer and construction, property development and cooperation as these two groups. Hello, my name is Nerzana binti Sirhan. I will continue to the next part which is advantage and disadvantage of segment reporting. First is contextual improvement. Segment reporting also enables stakeholders to gain an understanding of any change that may affect overall figure. Stakeholders to gain an understand, understanding of any change that may affect overall figure. Stakeholder also can examine its same report if see the figure is reliable. Second is emphasis of the prison. Short term, short term metric can be highlighted in the segment reporting. A company should take any pro and cons from the previ previous reporting that will occur loss or profit in financial spe financial statement. For example. Company can create a division dedicated slowly to its online work before the correct personnel and infrastructure are in place. That division may might be in serious trouble if the company overall profitability outweighs these losses. They may not show up on the financial account, breaking out such figure as a data point via financial statement and from the other hand can put pressure on your decrease those losses in order to increase short term earning second is transparency segment reporting can disclose which sector are profitable and which are drained on the bottom line for organization that operate in several category or geography area if segment reporting reveal that company international operating are much more profitable than its more home operation it may induce a transformation if it prevent management from concealing unprofitable business if done properly data manipulation if the data is present is a true company ice format segment reporting lends itself with data manipulation this enable from executive more leeway in deciding how segment are built and that indicator are provided manager may combine organization with various business concept together it can also pick and choose data to send the right man message to the right people to create a more accurate image performance loses is an internet division for example, for example, might be grouped with losses in unrelated for profitable business unit. The advantage of segment reporting is best of segmentation. A basic problem in segment reporting is the division of the device organization for segment account reason. Depending on the segmentation base, segment can be formed form in a variety of the way. Segmentation is also difficult to spot. Segmentation can be done depend on a variety of factors, including organization segment, sector, market, and product. Each base does have its own set of challenge and restriction. Second is allocation problem. A multi-product organization is one that deal with number of different product. Costs that are shared by two or more items will almost certainly exist. Joint expenditure include things like general administrative and legal expenses. Allocating this share expenditures become a tricky challenge when it comes to segment reporting. Some common costs such as energy prices can be allocated on a reasonable basis based on the light level in 
given sector. On the other hand, some common expenditures such such a director salaries can only be divided on a irregular basis. And then disclosed costs. Disclosed costs will be included in segment reporting. The provision of the new data is addition to routine data rest the firm operating costs in terms of collecting, processing and management control system expenditures. The cost agreement also is linked to the possibility or of more competition such as a result of segment reporting. And then managerial, managerial conservatives. In the absence of the specific specific legal measures requiring segment report to be disclosed, managers are inclined to regard voluntary disclose as beneficial only in individual condition. Management, for example, will be conduct segment reporting if they believe the company attractiveness may be better. Five is interim segment transaction. With some cross-segment transaction, inter-segment transfer can be made using a range of, of options including cost, cost plus, market price, and negative price. For the reporting segment, many of these strategies produce different operational results. Difficulty in providing data <coughs> Measurement issues have, have made segment reporting problematic. The difficulty of Determine segment information should be looked at the since the measurement problem affect the appropriateness of disclosing specific specific information. When we look at the statement of financial position, we net we notice that self figure particular inter segment cells are trouble. And then prob problem of means misinterpretation. In the situation, inter-segment inter sales transfer are included. If segment sales figure are higher than consolidated sales figure, it's led to user group misunderstanding aside from the sales figure. There is also the issue of determine segment cost. However, finding the trace cost of a segment is quite simple. A true challenge emerged when establishing the share of segment share expenses incurred from a share cost incurred by two or more segments. Hi, I am Kennedy Andreas. I will proceed the interim report basis preparation. Uh, Gavuda Burhat um, prepare its interim report uh, according with Malaysia Financial Report Standard (MFRS). Um, the interim report present presented in Ringgit Malaysia. Um, interim report prepare based on historical basis, except the disclosed in accounting policy. Uh, the interim financial report is unaudited and should be read in conjunction with the uh, group audited consolidated financial statement for the financial year and 31st July 2020. We go to the accounting policy adopted in financial interim report. There are two accounting policies been selected to disclose namely as below basic consolidations the interim consolidated financial statement comprise the financial statement of the company and its subsidiaries as at the reporting that the financial statements of the subsidiaries used in the preparations of the consolidated financial statement are prepared for the same reporting that as the company. Consistent accounting policy are applied for like transactions and events in similar circumstances. The company controls an investee if and only if the company has all the following power over the investee, exposure of right to variable return from its investment with the investee, the ability to use its power over the investee to effect its returns, 
and the second accounting policies is a business combination on goodwill business combination are accounted for using the acquisition method the cost of an acquisition is measured at the aggregate of the consideration transferred which is measured at acquisition debt fair value and the amount of any non-controlling interest in the acquiry group elect whether to measure the non-controlling interest in the acquiry at fair value or at the provisional share of the acquiries identifiable net asset acquisition related costs are expenses expense as incurred and included in ex administrative expenses group determines that it has acquired a business when the acquirer set of activities and asset include an input and a substantive substantive process acquired process is considered substantive if it is critical to the ability to continue producing output and the input acquired include an organized workforce with the necessary skill knowledge or experience to perform that process or it significantly contributes to the ability to continue producing output and is considered unique or scared or cannot be replaced without significant cost, effort or delay in the ability to continue producing outputs. Any contingent consideration to be transferred by the acquirer with the recognized at fair value at the acquisition debt. Contingent considerations classified as an equity if not remeasured and its subsequent settlement is accounted for within equity. Contingent consideration classified as an asset or a liability that is a financial instrument that within a scope of MMRS 9 financial instrument, it measured at a fair value with the changes in fair value recognized in the settlement in the statement of profit or loss in accordance with MFRS 9. Other contingent considerations that is not within the scope of MFRS 9 is measure at fair value at each reporting debt with changes in fair value recognized in profit or loss. Goodwill is initially measured at cost being the excess of the aggregate of the consideration transferred and the amount recognized for non-controlling interest and any previous interest held over the net identifiable asset acquired and liabilities assumed. If the fair value of the net asset acquired is in excess of the aggregate consideration transferred, the group reassesses uh, whether it has correctly identified all of the assets acquired and all the, of the liabilities assumed and review the procedures used to measure uh, the amount to be recognized at the acquisition debt. If the reassessment still result in excess, of the fair value of net asset acquired over the aggregate considerations transferred, then the gain is recognized in profit or loss. This is the type of interim report that uh, presented by the Gabuda Berhad, uh, extracted, condensed, consolidated income statement for the period ended 31st July 2021. They have four quarter 
first quarter is on 31st January 2020. The second uh, quarter is on 31st January 2021. Third quarter is on 30th uh, April 2021. And the last uh, fourth quarter is on 31st July 2021. Um, and then the profit and operations and also the profit before tax show in the line each um, period uh, uh, each of uh, quarter uh, only that from me thank you as for the period for the current and comparative statement prepared by Gamoda Berhad. The preparations of financial statement were provided in quarterly basis with the company year and 31st July 2021. As we can see from the presented slide, for consolidated income statement and comprehensive income were divided into interim period and year to date reported period. Therefore, as you can see here, the interim period will only calculate based on the quarter quarterly report. As for the year-to-date reporting, it is the cumulative from the first quarter until the fourth quarter. As for the comparative statement, it is comparable with the previous year, as well as according to the quarter provided. As for financial position, changes in equity and cash flow, the current and comparative are actually provided based on each quarter reporting quarter with the previous financial year end reporting. Any and affect the financial statement before and after. Based on the interim report for Gamuda Berhad, there are two adjustments done by the management. The adjustments such as restated of opening balance due to the adjustment for duration gain arising from the deem disposal and the second adjustment that did by the management which is reclassification of property and plant and equipment to the right of use asset. This is extract financial statement for the year ended 30 July 2020 and 31st July 2019 which is we can see at PPE as previous, previous restated at 1 million the tab this is the extract financial statement for the year ended 30 july 2020 and 31st july 29 that have been adjusted that we can see at property plan equipment and right of use asset adjust amount 65549 that that give effect to ppe as restated 997517 and right of use asset increase at 38448 and then for other reserve and retaining profit that adjust rm151970 that give effect to other reserve increase to 288973 and the retain profit increase at 4631173 and then for 30 31 July 29 other reserve is increased to 194725 and the retaining profit increased to 4325585 that make the company is profit which is adjust at amount one four seven 